In this video, I'll be reviewing a talk I gave called How to Become a Developer. And this talk was given to a group of about 20 people locally here in Oklahoma City, but it was added onto the Free Code Camp YouTube channel where it got over 60,000 views. I have rewatched this talk and I think there's a lot of really good things in it, but there are some things that I would change and some things that I would expand a little bit upon. And so I think now two and a half years later, it's important to go back and uh, explain some things I might not have done very well and also explain what things I've changed my stance on. I often get questions and comments from this talk with people reaching out to me on Twitter, which is great. And so I wanna clear up some of the common misunderstandings and some places where I think I could have given a little bit more advice. I've also read all the comments and so I will be responding to those as well. I've also left a link to the talk in the description below. So if you wanna watch the talk first, it's about 38 minutes and come back to this, you can. And with that, let's get into it. And the goal here is to become fully employed as a software developer. Like that's where we want. Okay, so this is the first thing and it's still really important. If you're receiving any kind of advice about tech or even just in general, it's really important that you frame that advice in the context of something that you want or of a certain goal. And so here in this first thing that I said in the talk, I wanted to frame this advice for someone whose goal is to become employed as a software developer. So that means that this advice that I would give would be different if you just wanted to do programming for fun or if you were trying to get a computer science degree or if you are already employed or you're trying to switch from a certain tech stack to another one. This is my most general and tried to be timeless advice with the knowledge and experience that I had at that time for someone who is coming from not a programmer who wants to be employed as a programmer. And so that context is really important because that frames everything I'm saying and that I think as I kind of get into the details here will help explain why I left certain things out or why I kind of painted with a general brush over some of this advice. So just keep that in mind as we go forward that's still the goal of this talk and this advice is what should I do and how do I do becoming a developer who gets paid to do that full time as a living. So out of all of these, you want to make web apps. And the reason you wanna do this is because web apps are really at the core of all these other things. The skills you pick up making a web app will either directly or indirectly transfer to whatever you're doing. If you wanna make a mobile app, that data is coming from somewhere. It's coming from an API, it's coming from a web app. You would do internet of things, that's like all APIs, like things talking to each other. So web apps is an amazing place to start. Don't make websites. <laughs> websites are dead and you don't, wanna, you don't wanna do that. Okay, this is something that I've had people reach out to me about a lot and so I wanna set this straight. I think I again chose poor wording or just a, a double kind of take on that word websites. We use that word every day to mean most things we do on the web and that's fine. The distinction I was trying to call here was I was trying to draw a line between interactive websites and static sites to an extent. Static sites are pretty big and still fine right now I think. Um, but what I was trying to say, even though <laughs> this is not what I said at all, but the idea behind this was when I work with new developers, it's very easy for them to learn HTML and CSS and then they like it and it's fun and they want to like master HTML and CSS and they just like, they get stuck and they're stuck at like, you know, level one of their journey and they have so much more that they need to learn and do and push through, but they stop on this one thing. And really the point I was trying to make here was you have to keep pushing into programming with a front end or back end language, a framework, building web apps. Like there's so much more you have to keep doing and you're not going to get to, I'm not gonna say, okay, let's not say not, your best chance of being employed as a software developer is by pushing through and continuing to learn and not stopping with HTML and CSS. There are people that do HTML and CSS as a job and it's fine and it's great. You can definitely specialize in those things, 
But if you are looking to become employed as fast as you can and have your widest possibilities for employment, you want to keep pushing. So I was basically trying to say like this old Space Jam website is basically like a document that where you can turn the pages and go page to page. There's not interactivity here. You don't want to be making websites like this. You want to be making web apps because that's going to give you the highest chance of being employed. So I hope that clears it up. Nothing wrong with HTML and CSS. There are people who specialize that and go really deep and they get into keyframe animations and they do all this crazy stuff. That's totally fine. If that's what you enjoy, go for it. But if you're just trying to get the best at bat percentage chance to get a job, you have to keep pushing forward into interactivity and building apps and not get stuck in making just web pages. Hope that clears it up. I think all these are good languages to choose from. Someone is angry in the chat saying, .NET and Node are not a language. We can't hear you, so stop yelling. Just don't pick PHP. Just please <laughs> pick one on the left. If you pick PHP, that's fine. Like you'll, you'll learn eventually. Okay, this is probably the main reason I wanna make this video. And it's because I wanted to give very specific advice here. I, as I had in my slide, everyone says like, all those things sound great, but just like, seriously, what do I pick? Just give me something to do. And I say like, oh, don't worry, you can pick anything, go do anything, it's fine. Which I think it is. But I realized that sometimes you just need a starting point. And since any of them are fine, I will just give you a starting point. And I think it's the best one now here in 2021. And I'm going to now tell you exactly where you should start. This is not because it is a perfect answer, but because I think it is the best answer uh, given the time we're in and the technology and where we're at. So my specific recommendation, which is maybe I'll make another video in the future changing this, but as of right now, it is to learn JavaScript and go through the free code camp curriculum. Uh, I'm not getting anything for saying that and they're not sponsoring me in any way, but I think it is just the best free and systematized program you can use right now. And it also uses JavaScript, which uh, has uh, one of the biggest pools of jobs you can take and variety of jobs you can take because you can do front end work, you can also do back end work. So here's what I'm recommending you do. Do free code camp and looking at the different certifications here, there's quite a few of them. The ones that are most important is responsive web design, which is HTML and CSS the JavaScript algorithm, algorithms and data structures, which is basically like, how do I use JavaScript to program behavior? The front end development libraries, so you can start to make some apps, start to make some things with it. And then the next one would be APIs and microservices. I talk about this later in the talk, but once you can make your own little app, you need that app to communicate with others or with a server. And so APIs are just absolutely essential. Uh, this is not a perfect program, nothing will be, but hitting these four will give you a great foundation. And as you get further and further, you'll start to see where you can maybe hop off and follow a different resource or go do projects on your own and learn that way. But in the beginning, this is just a great way to get started. Now, keep in mind, let's drill into this responsive web design. This is a lot of stuff. And this, so here the, the JavaScript algorithms is 300 hours, front end is 300, API is 300. This HTML CSS is probably also around 300 hours of work. I would also not go 100% through these things and just go top down. Now you can if you want to, but my suspicion is that that's gonna get boring. It's gonna get uh, more technical, faster than maybe it could. So what I would recommend you do is do some of the responsive web design, do some of the algorithms and data structures, get these to where you're feeling kind of comfortable because these are the fundamentals. So once you kind of understand these things, then do some front end development and spend some time here. And then maybe kind of pop back into these two things, you know, do some front end stuff, do a little more web design, come back, do a little bit of JavaScript, come back, go back to JavaScript. If those all become super boring or super confusing, 
drop down in here into the APIs and work through these. But really these four are the big ones that are would be great to go the deepest in. It's not that these are bad. I mean, learning Python is fine. Doing some information security. As you get towards these, like these are not going to help you as much. Machine learning, they're not gonna help you as much in getting a job as these first four will. And I'm, I'm mousing over or I'm skipping data visualization here because this is specific to, you know, drawing charts and graphs, which is, which is fine and useful, but this is not a priority for getting your first job. Oh, sorry. The data visualization is not a priority. So again, start with responsive web design and algorithms, get some basics under your belt, and then go into the front end development and pick up APIs at some point and then just keep going through these. As long as you're learning and growing through these four, that's fine, go for it. The other important thing here is that starting now, at the very beginning and all the way through your career, you need a balance of learning and practice. So you need to be learning new things, you need to be growing, you need to be working through problems, but if you do too much of that, you won't have any skill. On the flip side, if you learn how to do HTML and CSS and you just practice, 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 you're maybe sharpening that ax, so to speak, but it's a very tiny ax and it can do only one thing. So you need a balance. You can't be learning with no practice, you're useless. All practice and no learning, you're useful, but for maybe one or two things. So you need a balance there. So maybe if you're doing a daily routine, you spend the first part of it learning something new and the back half practicing what you already know or maybe you spend a couple days learning, a couple days practicing, find whatever rhythm or practice schedule works for you and just do what works for you. So that means yes, I'm now recommending JavaScript as your starting language. I still love Ruby. I still think Python is fine, .NET, whatever, it's all good. Um, I think PHP is fine. <laughs> okay, so this is another one of the main reasons I wanted to make this video. I really don't have a problem with PHP. Uh, I was joking but sorry to the PHP community uh, if that was not received as a joke. I was kidding, PHP is totally fine. Um, I was half joking and half reflecting on my experience using PHP, which was before Laravel, and I was doing you know PHP script block at the top of an HTML file, and it was, it was not great. And I don't think even the PHP community will, will, would not disagree that just having the like little script block at the top and running your code and all that was, was not a great approach. Uh, since that point, I have seen Laravel. I have friends who've used it, who love it. And so in this, I am taking back my stance that PHP is fine, assuming you're not doing it like the old way. But even then, again, do, do whatever you wanna do. There is not a bad choice as long as you are using your language to build web things. So, uh, with that, uh, sorry. You picked a language, how do we do this? Step one is to learn the language itself and then make CRUD apps. Third, there's some concepts outside of CRUD that you need to become familiar with. These are things like APIs, database, CSS and JS frameworks. Okay, just a quick note here. All that I still think is really great in it basically mimics the free code camp curriculum as well. So I think there's some confirmation there that's still the right thing to do. Uh, go watch the talk for all the details if you want, but go do those things. Let's talk about how to be an outstanding junior developer. Okay, this part I think is also really important. If you haven't watched the talk, drop into 21 minutes into this video and watch it. I've also written a post on free code camp about this specifically, which has also been read by around 50,000 people. Uh, there's some really good tips here, and this will help you, I think, not only grow as much as you can as a new developer, but also it will help you uh, deal with the frustrations and the problems you're going to run into as a new developer that are there because you're new. It's not because you did anything wrong. It's just the way it works when you're learning a new thing that's kind of complicated. So go watch these tips. It'll be worth your time. And with that have some questions yes it's a good question so you're saying you've learned Ruby but there's not a great scene here for that yet how 
Like what should you do next? I would say, so let me ask, what was, what do you think the problem was in finding a Ruby job? Were you not able to find enough things to apply to or you weren't able to get far enough? Okay, so I want to expand on this question because I think this is a really important topic and it's, it's one of the hardest things you'll have to do as a new developer is get your first job. And so I wanna kind of help frame the mentality to go at this with. So I think this is similar to, uh, let's take a metaphor of if somebody asked you to make three half court basketball shots in a row. Uh, I assume we're all familiar with basketball. If we're not, you know, you're standing a really long ways away from a basket in the air, you have a ball, you have to make that shot. Uh, it's a really far distance. I don't know the exact one, but for the average person, that's pretty tough. That's a pretty tough shot. And to do it three times in a row is also very tough. Now, to me, the job search process is like making that shot three times. There are some people who out of pure luck will make the very first three shots they've ever made. And that's just absolute luck and they're just gonna get a job. Go to the first interview, get their job. Now, if you're not that person, which most people aren't, what can you do? There's some things that are outside of your control. Um, there could be wind, there could be, it's you know, it's dark outside and there are no lights. Things that are not in your control but they actively are affecting your outcome. It's gonna be the same way with your job. Um, the market that people are in, the company, the frame of mind of the interviewer, the frame of mind of the person who reviews your resume, all these things affect your shots that are outside of your control. Uh, the things that you can control are what you know, what your experience is, how you approach these things. And so to me, those things are like training for that shot. It's going to the gym, it's practicing, maybe it's hiring a coach, maybe it's watching videos on YouTube. And so as you practice and grow and grow and take more shots on goal, it increases your odds of getting that success. And that's exactly what I think the first job is like. There's factors outside your control, there's factors in your control, and it's up to you to keep training and to keep practicing and it's really just a numbers game at that point. With enough practice, with enough training, with a little bit of maybe extra luck and help, you will eventually make that shot. And while it is not easy, and while it can be frustrating, it's gonna take some work, it's about getting better and increasing your, your chance of making that shot. So I hope that helps for those of you who are looking for a job. In the talk I also mentioned, you wanna make sure you're shooting at the goal that's the easiest to get. Um, talk to a recruiter in your area and figure out what types of jobs and what type of languages are in your area. So if, let's say you really love Ruby, which is fine, but if there aren't Ruby jobs in your area, you're really making that a much tougher shot. So find the technology and the frameworks that people in your area are using and it will help increase your shot percentage. Okay, now I'm gonna to respond to the comments on the video. And overall, they were uh, positive and very thankful. So thank you, I really appreciate it. And I'm glad you liked the talk. Uh, so right off the bat here, first, noted. Your first has been noted. I like this one, <laughs> I like this one at the top. How to become a developer, let the beard grow. Yeah, there's a, I didn't realize it was actually that uh, big of a beard at the time. It's hard because I don't see it. And then it's just, you see a picture and it's like, okay, maybe got a little out of hand. That's actually not the longest it's ever been, um, but that's a little longer than I normally keep it, as you can see. There's one here that says, I personally like it when Kevin Owens is trying to get a dev job. I don't know who that is, but sure, maybe I kind of see it, maybe not. Okay, this one just started. Should I learn Ruby or Python? Learn Python. Ruby is dying. Um, I've 
obviously in this video told you to pick JavaScript. I think Ruby or Python are both equally fine. If you really love one of those or are really curious, go for it. Uh, I don't think Ruby is dying, but that's conversation for another day. So yeah, JavaScript, Ruby, or Python, all good. Right under it, does editing code for a Tumblr blog theme count as web development? Uh, I don't really know what this entails. If it is manipulating the CSS of the theme, uh, sure, uh, it counts as web development. But I, this isn't the type, if it's just editing the style of the theme, that's not the type of development I would recommend. Uh, you wanna be building apps and interactivity, but if you like it and enjoy it and you're practicing CSS, like that's fine and keep doing it if, if you like it. Call it this one as well. Interested in learning web development with Ruby, look at the Odin project. I've heard good things about it. Um, if you're interested in Ruby and Rails, uh, check that out. So this one, I'm not totally understanding what they're saying here, but it seems like they're trying, like there's a, it seems like there's a decent point they're trying to make here, but I'm not sure what that is. Um, Blazing Gamer, if you're ever seeing this and you wanna specify, let me know and I can uh, respond to that. Do you need a degree to become a programmer? I'm interested in RPA. How many of you don't have degrees? What are your career prospects for not having a degree? This is a really good question. This person doesn't have a computer science but has an engineering degree. And then a little bit about their technology. So this is a really good question. Uh, the short answer is you definitely do not need a degree to be a programmer. It is not a hard requirement for 99.9% .9 of jobs. Um, that being said, there are companies who will use that as a filter for the resume. So while you don't need the knowledge of a CS degree to successfully be a programmer, as proven by countless and millions of programmers who do not have degrees, I do happen to have a computer science degree because when I started in development 10 years ago, it was a requirement on most job descriptions. Um, it was just like an easy pass or fail to get the interview. So when I was looking for jobs, it was useful in getting in the door. Over time that has changed and people realize that like I did, I had no, I had no real skill or knowledge of programming when I started, even with my degree. And companies realize that and so they're now starting to look more about like, what can this person do? What do they know? So you definitely don't need a degree. Um, and it, go back and there's a section in there in the talk about talking about being a welder versus a material scientist. If you want to get a degree and you want the college experience and you want to know more about computer science fundamentals, go get the computer science degree. But if you just want to be employed as a programmer, the cost and time for that is not the most effective way. So that's my kind of little spiel on degrees. Uh, take that what you will. I don't know what RPA is. If if that stands for robotic process automation, which is the first thing I Googled. Um, I don't know if, enough about that field to really say, um, maybe call around to some companies that are doing that and figure out what they would say. My guess is that the degree is again, not required, but it is going to be a strong signal or a gatekeeping mechanism for those jobs. Uh, so just kind of have to figure that out yourself. I'd like to know why I didn't recommend PHP. It's a good question. Hopefully I've explained that. I don't know why people tip around calling programming hard or that some may not be able to do it. Sure, many people are capable, that's a fact, but we are born with a certain amount of gifts and talents. I also know some people don't like to admit that IQ matters, but it does. Listen to some interviews with Bjorn Stroutsoup and John Carmack. Not everyone can be those guys. Some people are just wicked smart. This is a good comment. Um, there's a couple things in here that I want to break down. Um, I think, so I would agree in tiptoeing around calling programming hard. I hope I've clarified that in the previous part. Um, it is hard. It does take hard work. That's definitely true. I was trying to say something different. We've already talked about that. Um, that some people may not have the mind to do it. I think by definition, that's true. Like there are some people who probably cannot program 
But I think if you are watching this video and you want to do it, that doesn't apply to you. Um, he even agrees here. Sure, many people are capable. That's a fact. We're born with a certain amount of gifts and talents. Also true. Um, I disagree that IQ really matters. I think if you have base intelligence, base gifts, which I think basically everyone who's going to watch this will have, um, I think that's all you need. You need probably a hundred times more determination and discipline and willpower than you need intellect or talent. Um, I'm not familiar with this person. I'm not familiar with these people. Uh, but I, I think a point that is important here is there are some very, very smart and very skilled programmers, people that I do not even consider in my league. Um, the people who make the frameworks and languages and compilers that I use on a daily basis are out of my league. And I think smarter, more skilled, I think they have innate gifts. I think there there is an upper like swing of the spectrum where if you have an incredible genius intellect and you apply it at an early age, you produce these totally outsized results or even, and throw in some luck in there. I mean, DHH who helped create Rails like has helped employ through his effects of creating rails, millions and millions of people and created hundreds or hundreds of millions or billion dollars of, of economic activity through the apps that are powering, um, by rails like Shopify, GitHub, for example. So those are extreme effects. I think DHH, uh, while he has very controversial opinions is very like intelligent. Um, so yes, there are those people, but I don't think that, discludes or should discourage anybody who wants to be a programmer because yes, those people exist, but that doesn't mean that you can't also be a successful programmer. <laughs> Becoming a quantum physicist isn't hard. It's just hard work. This one's funny um, because they're kind of like proving my point in some way. Um, and they're kind of proving the point that I made earlier about the definition of hard. Like theoretical physics is one of the things I would classify as a hard problem. Like computer science, if you want to Google P versus NP uh, problem, like you may never find the answer to your theoretical physics problems, but to become a quantum physicist, it does just take hard work. Like if you want to go through the degree and through the school, like you can put in that effort and become that thing. So it's kind of both like, you are working on hard problems, but you can become that person through hard work. <laughs> Ruby versus PHP, I just watched the fight. Just jokes, just throwing jokes. I've thrown tons of jokes at JavaScript. I think anyone in the communities, anyone who's confident enough in their skills and experienced enough across multiple com uh, communities, you know, that they can take some jokes at their own expense. There's some things to joke about Ruby too. It is not perfect by any means by not watching so many of YouTube videos and coding instead. This is a very important point. Um, it's great to be inspired. It's great to learn from others, but in the end, you just gotta do it yourself. You gotta start learning, you gotta start coding, practicing. Uh, you're not gonna get your job by watching YouTube, so after this video, get to it. Why are websites dead? Hopefully I cleared that up. Sorry for the very confusing uh, terminology there. <laughs> this film with a zucchini. <laughs> uh, that's funny, but I think it's something about re-uploading, like an uploaded video maybe, just like compressed, compressed video. Where's this dude? Oklahoma City. You get tired of all the hatred that PHP gets. It's a language like just any other language. True. Again, my apologies. Just, just having fun. So Ruby and Rails are still relevant. Oh, so offended. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, Ruby and Rails are still very relevant. Texts that get any foothold don't really die because they, it's not like you rip out the code base. You just keep maintaining it. Math is a substantial skill to become a great programmer. If you're not good in math, you're going to struggle a lot. As a person who deals with numbers fairly easily will fly through programming. Otherwise, it's going to be painful. You can learn, you can do it, but dot, dot, dot. So this one, I don't necessarily agree with. Um, 
there is some math and programming, yes, but outside of working on an application that is like a tool for math students, graduate students, or a financial tool, there's not really that much math. There's computational stuff like grouping and filtering and iterating collections and that kind of stuff, but that's really more just like basic algorithms um, than it is math. So I don't think I would agree with math being a skill to being a great programmer. Okay, a couple of comments I wanted to leave for the end. Since says, really such an awesome speaker. Thank you. Not a lot of people in the audience. I would literally run to events that are organized near me. Uh, first of all, make sure they're not. I mean, make sure you've checked and seen if there's anything in your area that's a great place to network, quote unquote, but meet people, talk about development, learn and share together. And then also, you saw this on the internet. So while you were not there in person, um, you saw the talk and I'm also on the internet, so reach out to me. Send me a Twitter DM, put a comment on this video, and uh, love to hear from you. Questions, comments, anything anything you want to send, go for it. And then finally, this one. Good practical guy, disappointed the attendees didn't ask more questions. If you have questions, like I said, feel free to reach out to me, leave me a comment here, send me a Twitter DM. My tag is at John Mosesman, basically everywhere on the internet. So yeah, what, what would you ask? Let me know and if I get a you know big collection of those comments, I can always do another video and talk about those. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for the comments and the views on the other video as well. Um, hopefully I didn't say anything too bad or dumb this time that I'll have to correct again. Feel free to reach out here or on Twitter at John Mosesman and I'll see you around.